we now go to Julia Hartley Brewer and Dr uh, Philippa about uh, their views on this um, this whole subject. Um, Julia, I'm going to come to you first of all because you must be you must be bursting at the seams to talk about this. <laughs> well, this whole issue of self-isolating it is quite bizarre. We are in a worse situation now than we were last summer and a worse situation than we were on Monday. It was supposed to be Freedom Day. I was on the show. We were talking about this supposedly big opening up of society and the economy and we're in abject chaos again with... Uh, as Alice was saying, so many people forced to self-isolate who were perfectly healthy, all those children who've missed vital weeks of school, all these workers who desperately needed. And look, it's not just critical workers. It's not just you know, people delivering to supermarkets or, or people working in prisons or the NHS, all those vital workers. You know, in any business, you know, if you're a small business owner, you are the critical worker in terms of making that business function. And it seems to me to be absolutely absurd that perfectly healthy people who've come into contact with someone who's tested positive for COVID, but if those people have been double jabbed and you take a PCR test uh, to find out that you are negative and you take a, 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 a lateral flow test every morning before you go to work, there's no reason at all why those people shouldn't be well, at work. Well, let's bring in the, the medical possible. perspective on that. Um, Dr. Philippa, how would you counteract the way Julia and a lot of people like her are thinking? The first thing to say is that no one is underestimating how difficult isolation is financially, physically, psychologically. No one is underestimating that. But so too, COVID has financial, psychological and physical implications. And so too does long COVID. And we know that there are two million people affected with long COVID in the UK. And that is having a real issue. If you are pinged by the app, you have a, an increased risk of being infected yourself. And we know that there is a percentage of patients who will have COVID asymptomatically. And that means that you could then transfer that to somebody else, putting them at risk of the complications of COVID and long COVID. And that is why we're saying, yes, it's a pandemic, but it's also a pandemic. And we have to look after ourselves and each other. Yep. Julia. I'm sorry, but point. At no point did you address any of the actual issues, which are, are the really big issues for people, which is, of course, if someone has a risk of having COVID, they should be, uh, they should certainly be getting themselves tested and they should be isolated until they've had themselves tested. But the point of someone having a PCR test will establish if they are asymptomatic, if they think, well, I've not, I've not got COVID. You have a PCR test that will establish if you've got COVID and you may well be yeah, developing later on. So you have a natural COVID test. That addresses all of those concerns. And if that was such a big risk, why on earth have NHS bosses, the people in charge of looking after people uh, who, uh, who uh, uh, have got COVID, why on earth would they say they want an exemption for NHS workers from this scheme? So first of all, um, if you work on the NHS, if you are, for example, I, I have the app and when I go to work and I'm in my full PPE and I am masked and gloved and gowned, um, then we disable the app for that period of time because the app cannot say, um, doesn't know what I'm wearing at the time, doesn't know how protected I am. So from that point of view, there is already a way around um, the system. From the point of view of PCR testing and lateral flow testing, that is what is going to be the rules from August the 16th if you are double vaccinated. But if we let all the horses out of the stable at the same time, we have a stampede. We have to continue to do things in a stepwise fashion as we have been the entire time in order to prevent infections rising exponentially. And we know that they are rising significantly now. Dr Philippa, look, many people are saying, why wait until August the 16th? I and mean, we understand your points there, but we're saying, why can't they do that now? Why can't they just bring that forward and say, you know, so many people are being pinged who believe they don't have COVID, no symptoms, and they're having to take 10 days off work, as we've heard, that, you know, the knock-on effect, the implications that that's having. Um, so lots of people are saying, well, why can't they just bring that forward? Would you, would you support that? At the moment, no. And actually, I think that we should be going slower than we are. And I think, for example, that the masks should still um, be more mandatory than they are. And in the same way that people were saying, well, why don't we bring the June date forward to the May date and the July date forward to the June date? We know that for every time that you release some restrictions, there is an increase in the number of infections that develop. And yes, currently we think that it is less than 6%, about 1 in 20 patients, people who are pinged to ice isolate will then turn to be positive. But if all those go out, the impact on the RH will be significant. We have to do things stepwise. And even though... 
Doctor, um, you know, that may mean supermarkets, shelves running low, maybe no petrol. You know all the sort of social and economic knock-on effects there will be. You, you think that is a price worth paying? I think that there are always critical workers and the rules have always been different for critical workers. So, for example, doctors were allowed to send their children into school when everybody else was homeschooling. And it may be that we need to um, ensure that those critical staff can still go to work. And yes, for those that, that it might be appropriate to have PCR and lateral flow testing earlier. But what's so important, and I know you were talking about food shortages before, is that when there is panic buying, it is people on lower incomes that really are disadvantaged by that because they simply cannot afford to buy in advance and that they are buying day by day. So just like having the NHS app is social responsibility, so too is ensuring that you don't go and panic buy. Do you have a social responsibility, Julia? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm with her on the, on the uh, issue of uh, not panic buying, absolutely. Uh, but I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have a social responsibility to have the app. I've never had the app. I had COVID March last year. That's given me more immunity than my double jabs have given of me. The, the reality is every single point that, that the doctor keeps making about how we want to avoid people with COVID from being in the workplace and infecting other people is totally and utterly blown apart by people getting a PCR test. We're in a bizarre situation in this country where we believe positive PCR tests and positive lateral flow tests, making people uh, uh, have to isolate, but we don't believe negative ones. Even if you did a test what every day, if it's, safe, because... if it's safe for a nurse to go in and work on a ward with vulnerable patients in hospital after having a negative PCR test, being double jabbed, and, uh, and then having a lateral flow test every day, then it's perfectly safe for a supermarket worker or a teacher or a journalist like myself or yourself. It is absolutely absurd. This is not about taking risks. I know that the doctor, like many people, uh, are saying, look, we're going too fast. We went into lockdown on January the 4th. It is now late July. No one has moved fast. This has been the slowest, longest lockdown that, that we've had of the three. It has been internally slow for many businesses and many people and many children as well who missed out on lots of school. We need to get back to normal life. We have the jabs. We have the tests. Let's use the technology we have. Let's not wait till August the 16th. Let's not wait another month, another two months. We're not going to get any safer. All of the people who want to be double jabbed, who are at serious risk of COVID, okay. have had a double jab. Uh, guys, thank you very much indeed. Um, you've, you've certainly got the debate going. Everybody will have their views. We appreciate yours this morning. We'll say goodbye to you. Uh, what do you think watching at home?